if you step outside the ICU once again uh, into the general ward setting, uh, some of the very serious events that uh, could happen here uh, would be the cardiac arrest or the patient found dead in the morning or the patient uh, deteriorating so severely that he has to be taken to the ICU and um, with a high risk of uh, mortality uh, while staying there. But uh, is this like, oh. is this happening like lightning from a clear sky? Um, I'm sorry to say, no, it's not. Uh, because um, patients send us warning signs. And um, early warning signs of potential cardiac arrest or unexpected death can be found in deviating vital parameters for as early as eight, sometimes 24 or 48 hours ahead of the event. And uh, this is not new knowledge. This has actually been, been known for the last 15 or 20 years. And um, back then, in the late 90s or early zeros, uh, when this new knowledge about early warning signs was, um, came out, the issue for some clinicians was how do we detect these signs to prevent future deterioration and death? And so a man called Morgan and his colleagues, they developed what they called a simple tool, uh, the first early warning score system. And the purpose for their scoring system was to help clinicians detect deterioration. A few years later, it looked like this and had been slightly modified and was the modified early warning score. And uh, it's a so-called aggregated scoring system. This means that when nurses measure the vital parameters, uh, like the respiratory rate, the heart rate, the blood pressure, etc., they um, give each measured value a score. A score of zero is given to values within normal ranges, and the scores one to three is provided to more and more deviating values. And so in the end, all scores are added to reach a total muse value. But since Morgan and Shine and Hillman and who else uh, looked at this, uh, research has, within this field has focused on two sides of the issue. One side is the ability of the early warning score to predict adverse events. And the other is the effect on mortality when using the early warning score in the clinical setting. And the latter one is deeply connected to implementation of early warning score into the setting. And I'll return to that later on. But uh, the evidence of the predictive and uh, discriminative ability of different early warning scores system is quite strong at the moment. And of course, such evidence is uh, necessary in order to determine what is the right early warning score. Where should we put the thresholds? and um, because it seems like one size does not fit all, and that cannot be so surprisingly, but um, more and more t uh, types of early warning scores are now being implemented, and more f evidence within this area will be uh, come out in the next future, in the near future. And um, despite that having a national early warning score in Great Britain, uh, early warning score systems are still being discussed or debated, and they are also being tested and um, to be uh, implemented into very different clinical settings, and also the settings very close to where we are now. But when we turn to reduction of mortality by implementing early warning score, uh, one of the issues is that um, Often, early warning score is implemented together with medical emergency teams. And this is going to be the topic for the next presentation, so I won't go very deep into that. But early warning scoring and medical emergency teams are often implemented as one system, 
called the rapid response system. And this, this makes it very difficult to, um, to evaluate, is it the team or is it the early warning score which is having the effect on mortality. Um, at Hvidovre Hospital in 2009, we already had a medical emergency team in place. So, <coughs> together with um, Jonas Augustin and the Hvidovre Hospital, we decided to go ahead and do a study on the effect on mortality if we implemented the early warning score. And at that time, we used this um, paper and pen-based uh, recording uh, or oh, the, um, the chart for recordings, and of course now everything is uh, more and more uh, electronic uh, and automatically recorded. The intervention focused on optimizing clinical monitoring practice by systematic monitoring. <coughs> this is not very good, is it? I think this is. I can hear myself. Can you hear me? Can you? Okay. Um, and use of modified early warning score every eight hour. Also bedside interprofessional management of patients following an algorithm for action was one of the interventional parts. Our aim was to uh, evaluate short and long term <coughs> effect of the intervention on unexpected in hospital mortality. And um, the adjusted incidence of unexpected mortality was based on the total number of patients uh, with unexpected death related to the total patient risk time uh, that patients spend in hospital ward. And as you can see, when, re when, um, when adjusted to be the mortality rate per 100 patient years, uh, the ratio between the two mortality rates was significantly shorter in the uh, second post-intervention period compared to the pre-intervention period. We are very proud to present our study results in this publication. And around the time where we published our paper, there were two systematic reviews on this topic. And both stated that implementation of early warning score system in clinical practice has just yet to be fully realized. And this also raised the question, did our patients receive their medicine? And um, in order to answer this question, because knowing adherence to an intervention is quite necessary to interpret the intervention outcome correctly. So we evaluated how many patients had actually been monitored and uh, scored according to the instruction as part of the intervention. And we found that there was a significant reduction in time intervals between measurements, and this is, sh we show here by this kaplan uh the opposite kaplan curve. And time to next bedside measurement of heart rate, systolic blood pressure, and um, body temperature was significantly shorter after than before, and almost the kaplan speaks for itself. Use of early warning score has become more and more widespread. Early warning scores have been implemented into clinical practice in many acute care settings around the world, and the best known in, is the British news, the national early warning score system. And I think that you use it both here in Sweden, we use it in Denmark, and it's become very, very popular. And it also has an algorithm for escalating care. And this fact that the early warning score has now been, become so widespread makes it more and more difficult to conduct other randomized controlled trials of the effect of early warning score, or like we did, a pre- and post-interventional study. So people are using these early warning score without uh, exactly having very strong evidence of the effect on mortality. 
But during our study, we had the possibility to pay very strong attention to implementation strategies and efforts, and to teach frontline front staff why paying attention to deviating vital parameters and high early warning score is so important. And the strategies we made use of were like these, teaching, training, sharing knowledge, uh, feedback visits, etc. But however, in everyday practice, you cannot always pay that much attention to implementation strategies. And this may be the reason why some other researchers from another Danish uh, university uh, hospital find these results. They also implemented the early warning score like we did, but their patients still suffered cardiac arrest or were found dead. And what happened? Um, they found that these serious adverse events were due to poor compliance to the protocol for escalating care by both nurses and physicians. And the early warning score is a tool for detecting deterioration. Evidence of its ability to predict, uh, predict cardiac arrest is strong, and more evidence in this area is on its way. However, the effect on in-hospital mortality depends on how this tool is understood and used by the multidisciplinary team which surrounds the patient day and night, and how early warning scores are interpreted together with clinical observations and knowledge of the individual patient. Thank you very much.